Hey YouTube, it's Maddie, the Empty Nest Scrapper. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by. If it's your first time, I hope you enjoy the content and will consider subscribing when the video is through. If you're returning as always, I'm super glad you came back. And today I'm going to start a brand new series and it is specifically for card makers, paper crafters, who love creating pretty things, but do not have artistic talent. So if you're new here, spoiler alert, that's me. And I'm not ashamed to say it, I still have fun. And if that's you too, then I want you to have fun as well. So one of the things I would like to share with you is how you can create things. Um, that you can be proud of if you don't have artistic talent. And I am a firm believer of finding the right tools for you. So I'm going to share with you some of the right tools for me, and I hope you find it helpful, but you use whatever you have or whatever you like the best. And if you haven't found something that you like the best, maybe you will uh, benefit from seeing some of the things that I use and craft right on along with whatever you have at home. So uh, first and foremost, stamp positioning tool. This is a stamp perfect. They do not sell it anymore, but um, if you have a Misty or any other stamp positioning tool that will help you get a nice stamp, then absolutely use that. If you don't have one, maybe you can consider purchasing one, put it on your uh, wish list. If you're good at using acrylic box, feel free to do that. In addition, I'll show you the stamps. I just chose this stamp set and it is from scrapbook.com and it's just some encouragement stamps. I plan to use um, wishing you good days ahead. I'm gonna put that aside because that's gonna come later. Uh, and this is just the case for the stamp I'm going to use. It's from Blue Night Rubber Stamps, and it stamps that beautiful uh, foliage around the card. So all you really need to do, or all I plan to do, is create a background, and I'm not going to reinvent the wheel today, although I have made other sunset -y type backgrounds, um, with various colors, but today I'm going to use the colors that Blue Night Rubber Stamps has shown us on this particular stamp set um, because it's the most easy to follow along with. So look for a stamp that is almost a card already. That's how I see this stamp, stamp in particular. I feel like it's just a card waiting to happen. So first tool that I recommend is um, stamp positioning tool. Second tool I recommend is a, a stamp that will really uh, create almost all of the stamp all by itself. That will help us um, not have to worry about how much artistic talent we have. So I'm gonna put that aside. I have a card base here, and I'm going to uh, grab my waffle flower um, grip mat. It's the first time I'm using it, so I'll let you know if I think it's worthwhile. A million people have been sharing this or similar grip mats, and what this does is hold your paper down if uh, you want to do some ink blending. So the second tool that I highly recommend if you're interested in doing an ink, an ink blending background is some inks that blend very easily. And from what I've tried, Distress Oxides are the absolute easiest to blend. Today, I chose three colors. To, that will work 
very easily together. I can't create mud if I tried. It may not be a perfect sunset, but it won't be muddy. So this one is carved pumpkin. This one is mustard seed. And this one is squeezed lemonade. So spoiler alert, I just re-inked these pads. I don't know if there's too much ink in there or not, but we'll find out. Also, some blending brushes. I just recently received this as a gift. It was on my wish list on Amazon. So they're a little bit larger brushes, not the huge ones, but right in the center. Let's see if I can get this one out. It was a little stuck there. And you can see they're color coded, which is my jam. In addition to that, I'm going to use my tried and true brushes uh, that are also uh, color color coded off of Amazon. And these are my blending tools of choice. I'm not sure if I'm going to need these, but I might. So I'm going to keep them handy just in case I would like to use them. Also, um, what I often use when I'm ink blending is a little mat that helps to hold the inks in place and uh, I, uh, I feel that it helps when I'm trying to grab up some ink and create a blend. So I'm just going to add two together and see if those pads will stay in place when I'm trying to grab some ink from them. So I don't know if this is something you usually do. It's old news. Um, you do whatever is most comfortable for you if you've tried ink blending before. And if not, see if these little tips will help you. I'm gonna use the same blender for both yellows. And I'm gonna start with the larger um, brush because uh, I believe that it'll be a lot easier to um, blend a full, a, a full card, uh, card, not a base, a card panel with a larger brush. So I'm twisting it rather than pounding it so as to try not to shake the camera too, too much. We'll see how that rolls, but it, it is giving me some, I love this grip mat. It is just not moving at all. So that is lovely. And I'm just throwing ink anywhere because this kind of background sort of makes, uh, makes an idea more than an image. And that's the kind of thing that somebody without artistic talent can do. I am using uh, Accent Opaque for my card panel. And I believe it's 100 pound. It's available on Amazon. And uh, I feel that it gives me um, a nice smooth blend no matter what I'm trying. So I've moved on to the mustard seed. I did not clean off my brush. Yellow to yellow, I believe, is not going to be a big problem. So now I'm just going to bring in a little bit of a darker yellow. I start with the lightest first and move darker throughout the uh, panel because obviously the darker colors will cover the lighter colors and, you know, likely blend pretty easily, but you can't really get the light to um, blend too much over the darker colors. It kind of um, will drown it out. So now I'm gonna move to my orange and uh, not going to try to exactly create uh, the same 
the same, oh, that didn't come up at all. I'm not going to try to uh, create exactly the same um, background as was shown. I'm just going to see what looks good to my eye. And, oh, wow, a lot more ink was there than I had thought. So that's okay, though, especially on the edges. And let that be a lesson to me. You can't look at the br uh, the bristles and, and get a true idea of how much ink is on your brush. So I may actually move to one of the smaller brushes a um, little bit later on, but this is a big help to, um, to the blending process, bringing in a larger amount of bristles to make it easier to blend the entire panel. Um, something new to me is uh, hand trouble. I don't know if any of you have any difficulty with mobility, but this is something recently came into my life and I am trying to find the best ways to deal with that and still play with my hobby. And these larger brushes are definitely a big help and uh, I would recommend them. Actually, it's the first time I am using them on a pro project, but I can say the ink picks up easily, transfers to the paper, no problem. And of course, you want to pick paper and ink that will blend easily. It's sort of something that is more important than anything else. If you use inks that blend easily, they will make the job so much um, easier to complete. So I kind of feel like that's what I'm going with. And I'm just going to add with the brush just a slight bit more towards the, uh, towards the center. And see if I can just get a little bit more without losing all of it and not lose all of the yellow. So I'm bringing in some additional yellow and blend those together as best I can, as best I can. Yep. I'm gonna try to get rid of this little harsh line right here. And now I lost more yellow than I wanted to, but it is what it is, is what it is. So I'm hoping that when the stamping is completed, it'll all be all right. So this is what I'm going with. I'm going to close my inks this is squeezed lemonade so that um, they don't dry out. And then we'll be able to move on to some stamping. So mustard seed. And carved pumpkin. So I do remember seeing on YouTube, since this is the first time using the grip mat, which so far, as I said, I highly recommend. I did, I do believe I saw people recommend bending your grip mat so your panel comes up easily, and yes, it did. So there it is, some blended yellows and oranges very similar 
to the um, example on the packaging and it may not be exactly the same but that is okay with me i'm going to move this aside because i am going to clean my grip mat which i understand water is a-okay and we'll see if that is a fact looks to be true there it is it's wet it's going to have to dry but so far it's clear i understand from uh, many crafters who have been using this that the reds are difficult and also um different brands of ink may be difficult to remove but this pretty clear so i'm happy with that gonna move that aside as well okay next we will bring our stamp positioner into play and um what i have here is a sizzix sticky grid um a lot of people use uh grip mats in here i've been using sticky grid for years i've been using this one piece i don't know forever um and let me see i'm gonna place that well not exactly at the bottom because i might lose some of some of the stamping if i do it that way but i'm going to um hope that it holds well enough so that if I need to stamp again, I won't have any difficulty. So I'm just pressing that down as hard as I can without trying to leave a um, fingerprint marked. And here is the stamp that, uh, that came in this package. It's a red rubber stamp, and those are the ones that will most easily stamp well. I see this is a little crooked though, so I'm gonna switch that a bit. Not really one much for measuring, but the grids do show you if you are far off. And I try to at least stay in the ballpark of straight. I'm not a measuring gal, but in the ballpark is useful. So now I'm looking more at the grids to try to make that work properly. Pardon the butterfinger hands, but do have some difficulty as I stated earlier, and I'm doing the best I can. So I'm gonna place place my stamp down. And of course we can trim if we like, but right now I'm gonna just place it down and it pretty much fits pretty well right over the, the card panel. So that's useful. And um, we'll just uh, pick it up with the door so if you've used a stamp positioner before, you know the stamp will just adhere to the door and allow you to re-stamp if you've made some errors. And I am the queen of errors, so that's a useful tool for me. Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. So the, actually, I think I'm going to flip this over. Going to flip this over. I don't know if it will make any difference at all, but I believe that will better suit the, the image. Yeah. Not exactly sure if that's going to be true, but we'll find out. 
I've chosen VersaFine Claire. It generally gives a super sharp image with uh, little difficulty, and that's what I look for, that's what I need. It is a, um, it is a pigment ink, so it will take a little bit of time to dry, so be careful of that if you choose, choose VersaFine Claire. So I'm going to do my best to cover this image completely. And uh, if I can't, of course, the beauty of using the stamp positioning tool is that I can just stamp again. So on the red rubber, you can pretty well see if you've covered it or not. And that's a big plus. Um, especially if you're using black like I am using right here. So I am trying not to get marks in the area that shouldn't be stamped. I usually do. Uh, just gonna say it, I usually do. I don't know why that's such a challenge for me, but it is. Okay, and let's flip it over and see if we can make a panel that is going to look nice. It doesn't have to look like an artist created, it doesn't have to look perfect, but it might look nice because the work has been done by an artist. The work of creating the art is not done by me. I didn't even put together this color palette. I copied it right off the Blue Knight's example. And that's why I think they give it to us, to help us. I will um, definitely make panels with different colors. And I actually did, I'll show it to you um, when this is done. That's a pretty good impression. Usually I go for two impressions. I will, um, I will go a little bit more but uh, I'm relatively happy with that. And uh, just gonna try to even it out a little bit. But, uh, but I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just gonna stamp a bit more and call it a day. So this should work out. Because it's red rubber, as I said, it creates a pretty good impression on its own. So you do you if you like to pull your sweatshirt over and uh, press your ink down or use a little tool like this. Uh, this is a little tool I made from a Yankee Candle. If you want a um, video on that, I'd be happy to do it. but. Of course, there are already a million videos on that. And of course, if you're a crafter, you don't even need a video on that. It's um, something you can figure out in three seconds just by looking at it. So I'm happy with that impression. And I'm just gonna not really clean the whole stamp off, but get most of the ink off um, just with a towel and clean it maybe with uh, some stamp cleaner later on while you don't have to wait and watch for me to do that because I'm gonna move to the next stamp. And uh, let's see if I can find where I put it. And I'm gonna see if I can get it to fit right in to this little space here. So it looks like it's going to fit pretty well. Let me move it a bit over. For a more centered look. As I said, I'm not a measuring kind of a gal, but I do try to get it somewhat symmetrical and straight. 
Yeah, my eyes fail me sometimes. Looks like it could be okay. Let's give it a try. And there are grid marks on the door to help as well. Let me see. That actually looks relatively straight and relatively straight is relatively good enough for me. So I'm gonna go with that. And again, utilize the VersaFine Claire. So we'll see if this can leave an impression with one pass. If not, that's the beauty of the stamp positioning tool. So gonna give it a try. And I'm just gonna press a little bit more and see if I can have it leave an impression without uh, an additional inking. I do see that the D um, is not completely inked. So I'm going to try it again. See if I could make that solid. And I did. So now the rest is not as dark as the D. So we have to go a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. So just going to take my trusty filthy cloth and wipe that off somewhat. I will clean it properly after the video. You don't have to watch that. Um, I do use Hero Arts ultra clean if that's something you're in the market for it's a little bit oily but i feel like it does the job well i've been using that for many years so let's cover up our ink so it doesn't dry out and grab our panel and i'll let you have a look This is what we have so far. So as you can plainly see, it absolutely needs to be trimmed, but so far we're pretty close to a card. Let's put this aside and grab our trusty trimmer. So I'm just going to hope that I don't smear the ink or shall I just, hmm, maybe I will just uh, hit it with a little heat. So I'm just going to leave that on a low. Do I have that plugged in? Let's see. There we are. So I'm just drying it with a low heat just to try to keep it from from smearing. I think that should be enough. Um, some people have a heat tool specifically for that pur purpose. I used a hair dryer. People say you shouldn't use a hair dryer. Well, that's what I had, that's what I use. It's not what I use for embossing, but it is what I use to dry a little bit if I'm going to be working in my art journal or um, drying a little bit of inking. So right now I am just trimming the parts that were not inked up. And uh, I will 
possibly trim more when I see how it lines up to the card base. And make my final decision then. For those of you who don't have a favorite trimmer, this is my favorite trimmer uh, for card making. It's the Tim Holtz Tonic Guillotine Trimmer or Guillotine, however you feel it should be pronounced. Um, I do have another trimmer so that I can use it with my 12 by 12, but that one works relatively well for almost everything that I do regarding card making. So let's see what I've done with my card base. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> so let's take a look. I think it looks pretty nice. I don't know if you agree. However, for someone who does not have any art ability at all, this is something that I will gladly um, give to someone as an encouragement card and not be ashamed. So I'm going to put down some double-sided tape. Uh, I'm use, using my ATG. I've been using that for years. Scotch Mix, this one. It was relatively inexpensive when I purchased it. Oh, I don't know how many years ago. Many years ago. And uh, I bought it at Michael's. At that time, they used to have a 40% off coupon almost all the time. And I think I spent... Uh, 20 something dollars for it. I was uh, recently at a craft show looking at these with my daughter-in-law and I was shocked to see what they were selling it for. I think it was 50 or $60 and I told her not to get it. I'm um, hoping that that was just a fluke, but I don't know. I like to add some glue to that. Just the way I roll. Let's see, this is Barely Arts glue. It has a thin precision tip, but the key about using the Barely Arts is that it gives me some wiggle room to adjust my um, card panel because I inevitably put it in lopsided on my first try pretty much all the time. So I feel it's very secure with those two adhesives. And that's what I've been doing for many years. You may think it's overkill and you may be correct, but this is my system. Feel free to use your own. And just going to take my acrylic blocks and smash that down for a minute or two. And except for a white panel inside so that you can write on it, maybe I'll do that. I have a white panel here. Let's see if it's going to be a, the proper size. And, uh, that's something I can do off camera for myself, but you'll see. So this is the finished card. I will glue a light panel, a white panel inside so you can write on it and uh, add my signature on the back. So you don't need to see that part, but I hope you enjoyed this little video. And I hope if you are someone just like me, who likes to create cards, but may or may not have any artistic talent, that uh, it encourages you to have fun with your um, hobby. And I also hope it helps you 
by um, showing you what supplies will make it easier for you. So that was my goal for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave a comment, um, thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. So I'm going to try to bring one of these once a month. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye, YouTube.